Hello, I'm Jerry McKee with JD Freelance Media Services. Today we're going to be talking with some veterans. I'm going to ask them some questions and they're going to answer some things that maybe you did not know about the service or about their lives in service. Hello, I'm Jerry McKee. I'm with the uh, JD Freelance Media Services and this is going on our down home in Union County. Uh, this will go on social media and uh, it will go on YouTube and also uh, Facebook. So we'll have a lot of people uh, watching this. And uh, I, I thank each one of you for coming because a lot of people just don't understand how it was like when uh, we were younger to go into service. It wasn't like it, it is now, so it's just a little bit different. So I got some questions I want to ask you uh, for you to let other people know how it was when you went to service. But right now, I want you to start uh, right here and say, i like for you to tell your name and uh, what rank you was in, uh, what rank and what uh, branch of service. Well, my name is uh, Joe Tracy. I, I'm from uh, Packlet, South Carolina, up on Jerusalem Road. and. Uh, I was uh, I joined the United States Army in 1981. Uh, I uh, finished up in 2011 as the rank of command sergeant major. And uh, what made me join was my uncle, Mr. James Giss. Uh, I saw him in uniform as a young man, and I knew right then that college was for me. I wanted to be in the service. Okay. Good. You sir. Okay. My name is John Earl Smith. Uh, I live in Jonesville, uh, off of Highway 9. Um, I joined the Army, and let me clarify that a little bit. I enlisted in the Navy in 1972, around, I think, last part of May, uh, under the delayed entry program. I got my draft notice for the Army, so I wound up going in the Army as a volunteer through their special program. Uh, I retired from the National Guard in 2000, uh, in July 2000 after 27 plus years, uh, rank up staff sergeant. Uh, I would watch Army movies on television and watching the tanks maneuver around in the guys. That's what made me want to join, you know. So I picked the Navy. The army wanted me, so the <laughs> army won out. So you wanted to drive tanks, but you picked the Navy. It's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's you good. Know, That's good. <laughs> All right. I enjoyed it. Good. Uh, All right. Well, made me uh, uh, grow up quicker. Gosh, it's, a, it's a different way of life. Okay. Well, we'll get back. We'll get into some questions there. So you'll be able to express uh, some of these things that uh, went to us because we were young men back then. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Giss. My name is uh, Johnny Johnny e. Giss. I was uh, drafted in the United States Army on July the 28th, 1969. Uh, went to the Republic of Vietnam and Cambodia. Uh, I did 23 years in the Army National Guard. Retired from GAD Union on. The, on uh, March 9, 2008, total 27 years of service, obtained the rank of E5. Okay. In the United States, I'm, I live here in Union, South Carolina. Okay. Mr. Lott? My name is Charles Edward Lott, Sr. I reside uh, on the Maple Road in Union, and I enlisted in the Army uh, in 1973, the reason being that when, didn't have the uh, means to go to college, so I wanted to do something with my life. So I decided uh, back then the recruiting station was on Main Street Union, and I went in there and uh, joined the uh, United States Army, and I was there now for three years. I uh, received a rank especially four before I come out. Okay. Joe, when uh, you recall the first days that when what it felt like when you first went in? Oh, yes, sir. It felt like uh, I was back home. Biggest man I've <coughs> seen in my life. Uh, thank God for a pretty large father. So it really didn't shake me, but it, 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 it kept me on my toes. Uh, but the best part, uh, Pastor, that I take from the early part in the Army is how people cared for you when you went in. They kind of took you on as their own, the older soldiers. Uh, Everything that they had, they would give you. Uh, uh, 
you may see them do this or do that, but they would always keep you away from that style to better you. So uh, it, it was very, it was difficult at times because I'm, I'm, I love my family and missing them. But after joining uh, and getting in there and getting to see the senior guys and see how they take care of you, and it, it became I knew then that that would be my family and that's what I wanted to do. Okay. Johnny Gibbs, what, what did it feel like when you first went in? You first stepped in that, off that bus into that recruiting station. Well, uh, I had a, a wild experience in, in Columbia, South Carolina. I said, they, some guys didn't give us no good choice wood that come out of Sunday school lesson. They give us some real bad wood we didn't send for you. And uh, all you, you your mama's boy need to go back home. <laughs> and it got on back down, got us down in Spoke Jackson. They threw us in about three, between three and four o'clock, step forward. And then we uh, start picking up my first duty. We start picking paper. That's really I don't like to see no paper on the ground. Keep the place clean. That's <laughs> one of the first duties. So they shipped me out to Fort Garden, Georgia. Okay. I spent a lot of time in all the posts in Georgia. Okay. Charles, what is uh, one of the experiences you had at boot camp training, your basic training? What, what is one of the experiences that really sticks out to you? Being at Fort Jackson and tank running Tank Hill, I mean, that was an experience for me, all the running that we had to do. And sand fleas there too, didn't they? That's right. And one of the, the, the biggest thing about, about me uh, on Tank Hill was the drill sergeant's motivation to motivate me. I didn't want to quit. <laughs> I didn't want to return home as a failure. Right. So uh, I was ready. Yeah. John Smith, what was your experience uh, at boot camp? It was, it, it was very interesting and uh, challenging, and I enjoyed that the most. Uh, especially, I took my training at Fort Jackson on Tank Hill, as they refer to it. And the drill sergeant would take me aside and talk to me. And, uh, tell me how important it is to pay attention to what they're teaching you because yeah. it's a life-saving measure. It may seem like they picking on you, but they're not. They're really doing it for your own benefit. Uh, and I was blessed. I had two friends that was in the National Guard that I was able to talk to from time to time. And then the late J.D. Uh, J.D. name, uh, Sure. Yes. Come on. JD, uh, he was a pro he was a private marshal. Okay. Uh, he also looked out for me mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, the basic training and I took my basic training in the ART there. Yeah, uh, so it's, it taught it taught you your. It, 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 it's, it, it showed me a different way of life and the responsibility that goes with it. Yeah, it taught you life saving skills, did it? Yeah. yeah. Do any of you remember your instructor's name in uh, basic training? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. What was your instructor's name, uh, Joe? My drill sergeant was Robert Earl Dock and uh, Buck Jenkins. <laughs> they uh, looked like, uh, you remember Arnold Schwarzenegger? And oh, yeah. The, the was it Danny DeVito? Because mm -hmm. Buck Jenkins was a little short guy, but that was the guy everybody stayed away from. <laughs> uh, uh, drill sergeant Dock was a big, big you know, people, you, you, they were just a team. All right. What about you, John? Do you remember your drill sergeant's name? Um, uh, Mo Sola. Uh, his <laughs> name Moses. <coughs> Down in Polk Garden, Georgia, he told me he didn't lie about it. So I'm going to have you get put in Georgia back in the line. I think he just about made it. He did a good job. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was among some drill sergeants. They motivated us. We had to go on that ride for rain. I don't think I can hit the bowls out and I, like I used to, but I could hit that target good. When I was at Fort Garden, and after we left uh, uh, the motivator at Fort, uh, Fort Garden, Georgia, and going through all the different training, and uh, now what was what was your drill sergeant's name? Moses, uh, Moses, he name. Uh, okay. Know, sergeant, staff sergeant, E6 Moses. I can not remember his first name. Okay. But well, he, he was he was hard on us, and then we had to. We had another thing. He he made us keep the place clean. I tell people, I used to be like, we can clean the floor, and we'd be able to eat off the floor, and that's. Lily, I'm not kidding, but I'm yeah. telling the truth. Okay. Then we went well, on to Fort, 
Well, Claude and I took my Okay, I'll, I'll get you some more questions there. I don't mean to cut you off. I just want to get you, uh, your, your drill sergeant's name and stuff to see if you remember back then, because they do make an impression on you, don't they? Uh, yes, what about sir. you, John Smith? Uh, uh, I'm not sure, because we, we had a bigger platoon. Yeah. Uh, instead of having, like, four platoon, we had, like, five platoon. So these were, like, filling in guys. But I remember... Uh, Drill Sergeant Smith, uh, Drill Sergeant Richburg, uh, the company commander was Captain Moore from Tennessee. Uh, they all stood out. They was good men. I mean, they, okay. they, they, they drill it into us how important it is to pay attention. Okay. Charles, what about you? You remember? No, I don't remember in 73, <laughs> but I do remember uh, him taking special care of us and I was impressed with his sharpness, his dress, uh, his voice, uh, his running us and one of the main things that I remember about him that nobody in B T and two would fall out. Well that's great. If, if that's great. Nobody would fall out. Now uh Charles I'll start with you this time. Uh which war did you serve in? Our wars? I I went in at the end of the, the Vietnam era. Okay. What about you, uh, Mr. Giss? I went in, in in the Vietnam War. I served in 1970 with the Vietnam in okay. Vietnam War. Okay. Cavities. Okay, John. The tail end of Vietnam. Okay, Joe. Well, I was fortunate enough to serve in the uh, Afghanistan War, the Gulf War, and the Iraqi War, and uh, a couple of them on numerous occasions. So. Okay. Now. Uh, I want to ask uh, Mr. Lott there, do you remember arriving and what it was like when, when, you, wrote, when you arrived to Vietnam, do you, you remember what it was like? I, I didn't go to Vietnam, I, I uh, went to Germany. Okay, uh, Germany? Well, yeah. How was that like? Is it, a, you know, it was a new world. Different union, a right? Country, a country boy who's never been out of the out of union. It's a new world, new language, uh, an experience, a life experience I'll never will forget. Okay. It's great. It's great. great, Mr. Guess. What? How did you feel uh, uh, when you arrived in in Vietnam? Well, here was a different experience, and I would love to tell you. Uh, ben Wall, Vietnam. We arrived, and uh, I was greeted. And one of the best things I remember, the United States Air Force gave us one of the best meals. And I still tasted some of that right now. And I was I was kind of royal, uh, uh, treated when I first got in. In country in the Vietnam and in, in, in Vietnam, then I went out to Fort Bend with the first cap. That's when we start really seeing the real side of the of South South East Asia. That's when you start seeing the nasty real side. Of it, right. We have a lot of action. Okay, let me ask each one of you this right here. What was your M M I O, which most people would say? What was your job assignment? What was your job, MOS. Joe? Yes. My MOS, I was, uh, when I first went in, I was a 76 Victor, which you deal with warehouse, which is RX, DX, issues, turn in, and, and uh, the Army uh, put all these different MOS together, so I ended up being a logistician, a logistic guy. Okay. So we made sure that the gun, the, the, the fighters had their beans and bullets and ammo and made sure that the supplies was not in a hang up that they were flowing through so that these guys could continue to do their mission. Okay. What about you, John? I first went in with, uh, I was a 64 C-20, which is a truck driver. Uh, when I got to Germany, I was made a 64 C-30, which is a heavy transport. Transported M60 tanks of all sizes, uh, okay. all over Europe, uh, from uh, unit training in the field, in various places, from the field to the maintenance shop, mm -hmm. well, you know, upkeep of the tank. Okay. Uh, All right. That was my primary job, was to transport okay. M60 tanks. Okay. What about you, Mr. Giss? Uh, my uh, MOF was 11B. 10 or somebody 7 w 20 I, I was <coughs> all like right in the empty part of the under the, the really the motor fight part of it okay so from beginning in in, in service 
<laughs> deal with all the M16, the M60, M79, all the different light weapons that I dealt with in, in service. Okay, well, Mr. Lott? I was, uh, my MOS was a uh, military pol policeman, but my, my primary, my secondary was was uh, security, stockade. So I worked both of those, those areas, military police and stockade security. Okay. Joe, I want to ask you, uh, tell me about your most memorable experience that you had that just sticks out more than anything in the world. Well, the most memorable experience I had during the time was uh, when our, one of our units, uh, our STB unit, uh, we had been at our unit the 101st Sustainment Brigade was in uh, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And one of the Afghanistanian guys who had been working with them for us <coughs> during the 15 month period walked in one morning and detonated himself and we lost six soldiers. But the thing that got me, I, I had to go to, uh, we had a specialist was a colonel's clerk. We had, I had to go to Maple, 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 Florida as the representative to meet the family. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm worried, you know, I never lost a child. What do I say to a parent? Yeah. And to see how that family consoled me. You know, I got a chance to talk to my mother while I was in the hotel room, nervous about going, and, and I remember my mom saying, just be quiet and let's pray and let God. And that always sticks out to me that the people that you think you got to help, if you just sit and listen, they also in return, even though it's dark on their side, it can help you. Yes. So I, I've okay. always, I, I keep that, I wear the t-shirt with those six kids on the t-shirt. Uh, that, that always sticks out because it's, it's like me sitting here talking to you and then an hour now you hear something that happened to me or you. So, well, I was just talking to Pastor. Uh, I was just talking to Joe and Charles. Uh, so yeah. that that stuck with me, and uh, and I don't use it as a as a as a dark time. I use it as a as a as it lifted me as a right. person, made me a better person to see that no matter what your troubles are, there's always somebody else a little worse off. Yeah, great, it's a great story, uh, Mr. Guess. Uh, what about you? What is one of the one of the most memorial uh, memorial the uh, memorial experience that you uh, experienced. Well, it was quite a day on May 20th, 1970, in the Republic of Cambodia. We had crossed the line. That's over the line from Vietnam, over the border. We I was always up front. I'm the front man. I led I led the company for quite a bit. We hit contact. I was in second platoon. Second platoon at the time had been bragging to all the other platoon, hadn't lost any KI, any men wounded, any men killed. But at that particular time, around about 10, 11 o'clock that, mo that morning, we lost most, a lot of our men in second platoon. I think about eight to 10 of them, about five was killed and about, I mean, about five was wounded. That's when I received my first bronze star. I thought at that moment that I would not be at the happy this moment to be back in the United States to hear the talk. I still take that moment very with pressure from me. And they thought so much, Jill West Martin thought so much, there was four of us with Hebrew rights, thought so much of me. He flew, he flew over Viet, over to Camoni and watched for us the <coughs> B Bronze Star. It was my first one Bronze Star that I won in the Republic of Vietnam. And so that was a heck of a, a moment. And I know that it's a guard somewhere. I thought that was it. Well, thank you, Mr. Guest. And actually, you answered my next questions. I was going to ask you, has any of you been awarded any medals or citations? And you just said yours. What about you, Charles? My most memorable uh, moment was uh, having pride in the Provost Marshal uh, selecting me as one of the military policemen in our Corps to integrate the WAC, the Women's Army Corps, as becoming military police women. We didn't have him prior to me coming in, but he 
uh, I guess, observing uh, my work, my performance in military police, uh, I was selected to inter integrate the women into the military police corps. Okay. Mr. Smith? Well, uh, I would say going down to Luxembourg uh, with General Patton there, uh, we transported the vehicle that he used to drive back in the day, you know. Down there, they, they thought of General Patton as pretty much God, you know, that's mm -hmm. how they looked upon him. And their treatment of us as soldiers was, I mean, spectacular. They, they, they showed our poor and love and care for us. Uh, it didn't matter what color we was. Uh, we went into the little, I guess you call them a little guest house, uh, whatnot. We didn't have to pay for anything. They, they gave us Coke Colas, yeah. no wine, Coke Colas sandwiches and stuff. We were just treated uh, fantastic. I mean, uh, okay. it's other stuff sticks out, but that was, to me, more than anything uh, that sticks out uh, hmm. during my two and a half years in Germany. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, and Charles, we'll start with you. Why, why, why did you, st uh, how did you stay in touch with your family? Through letters and phone calls. Okay. What about uh, you, Mr. Giss? The same way to do letters and do phone calls. Mr. Smith, same, same way. Joe? Yeah, mostly through uh, phone calls. Uh, when I first went in at basic training, there were mostly letters because sometimes you would have the drill sergeants uh, standing over some guys who just completely lost contact with their family. Yeah. I never had that issue because uh, I, I wasn't <coughs> where I meant it wouldn't be for my family. I never done anything by myself. So hearing them or hearing my mom, uh, it just motivated me to do, do better. So, okay. you know, you, I called a lot, but sometimes you would write because you could write your feeling on them papers and it, and it just flows. So. Yeah, it, in, a, in a letter writing, that's, yeah, you know, pe people's lost that now, haven't they, that, yes, that, that right there. Uh, let me ask you this, and uh, each one of you can answer this, and Joe, we'll start with you. What was the food like? Well, I, I, I'll tell you, when I first went in the Army, they had the sea rat, wasn't it? Sea rat? Sea rat. Sea rat. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, I thought that was the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> You, you could you could heat them things up on the on the engine of your truck yeah and, uh, you mix your you know your chicken stew or your ham slices and your cheese and I, I enjoyed it and and uh, you know the favorite meal for everybody in the military in the army I know was chili mac so you know you gonna get that at least twice a week so I, I didn't have a problem and then as I advanced on through it was it's like now I know when I was in Iraq and Afghanistan we had uh, we didn't use our cooks. Uh, we used KBR. So you know, you you can go in the in the in the uh, dining facility, or they call it the defect now. I think you have ice cream bar, pizza bar, and then you have your main line. You have shrimp and steak on certain nights. So okay, it, it was pretty good. I'm quite sure these uh, young yeah. men didn't have it like that. <laughs> <laughs> it so, progressed well. Well, after, after we got out. Yeah, so, so, so they'll, they'll probably speak a yeah, little different. Yeah. Well, well, John, how was your rations there? <laughs> well, I, I, uh, well, it, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it started like he said, sea ration, but it progressed by the time I retired in 2000. I, I was kind of on par with Mr. Tracy because I stayed in from 72 to 2000. You know, three years army and then the rest of it national guard. So I got a taste of both kind of food. So it went from slop to <laughs> golden corral. Right. You know, but I enjoyed the slop too. Uh, yep. You know. Uh, okay, Mr. Guess. Well, on uh, sea ration, I have no crumb with the food. The sea ration is. Well, let me back this thing up. When I was uh, in my training, I had some dumb, real good cooks at Fulford Club in Alabama. They was in competition who could cook the best food. And those guys cooked good food. 
Then the kid took the sea rats and like come inside me and said, the sea rats and it was good, all that fruit cocktail, all those, all those beans, all the when all we heat all that stuff up. He, 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 because sometime in, in the field we have a they want to have a fight over over the over the pound cake and the food cart. <laughs> Don't get the pepper steak. Yeah, and, pepper yeah. Steak. and see, and then another thing, well, we have, I remember how good remember this year. Mama, I, I ride home. So Mama sent some cookies. Mama sent a cake, and Mama did. did I tried to do exactly what her son asked her to. She did, and when she the box come in, when my platoon, I was the second dude. Man, we gonna be eating good today. They did. It. You know I go share with them. We're all yep. in this together, so we, we, we did pretty, we did real good. I have no qualms about the food in the United States. Before you get to Mr. Light, yeah. can I, I tell you one thing about my my living in the Army. You know those guys, those uh, cooks, mm -hmm. those guys would be up 3 o'clock in the morning, and then they would go over to the dining facility and prepare the meal for, for, for the rest of them. And I, I, I tell you something once, I used to wonder why I had a sergeant major, his name was Sergeant Major Jerry Payne. And he just smoked this cigar. And back then, you know, the sergeant major would sit in the back of the mm -hmm. dining facility at the table that you knew not to sit at. And and uh, every morning, though, it seemed like when I got there, he would always be just coming up. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I used to listen to him every morning. He, he would thank every cook. He would always say, and I mean, literally shake their hand. Thank you for, for what you do for us. Thank you. He, he would go down the line, and then he would go get just a cup of coffee and go sit in the back. And commence to doing what sergeant majors do when you're out of, out of order. Yep. So I, 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 I tell you, the food, even with the cooks and those guys put in that at that time, it was, it was good food, and we didn't have as many soldiers being over obese or overweight or right. over fat or which way ever you want to put it, <coughs> and we had our cooks. And then later on as I transferred again, we end up not using the cooks, putting the cooks in gun trucks. <laughs> so that's where our cooks ended up in gun trucks, but we had all these KBRs, mm -hmm. all these organizations cooking. So uh, yeah, we, okay. we had a, you, you have to give them a lot of profit because we didn't have the issues that we have now for obesity in our military. Right. Charles, how was, uh, how was it there then? From Fort Jackson to Fort Gordon to Fort Bliss to Darmstadt, Germany, they was top mess sergeants. Okay. Trained by the military with the cooks who cooked great meals. We received great meals. And one of the best being military police at Ryan Main Air Base, uh, uh, I got to give props to them. The the Air Force <laughs> ate high. They not aim high. They ate high. <laughs> Four meals a day. <laughs> well, the day you got you uh, recall recall the day that you actually your service ended. When you say it's time for you to go home, what was your reaction? To start with uh, Charles. I started counting the days. You, you start counting the days and nights as you head toward your ETS. Okay. And when mm -hmm. that day come, when when I was taken to Ryan, Maine and blow that plane, I said, thank you, Lord. I'm ready to get back to this little old small union. <laughs> what about was, you? But it was a great experience. Great. Never will forget it. Never will forget it. What about you, Mr. Giss? And that was a great, age. Uh, I was counting the days. Uh, I love it. Down in Texas, Fort Hood, Texas. Glean, uh, I was counting the days and, and, and they offered me a list meant ten thousand dollar bonus. I took and have that. I want to get back to South Carolina. Can't wait to get back to it there. So I, I didn't I refused the ten thousand dollar bonus and uh, come on back to Union, South Carolina and I couldn't wait to get <coughs> back to Union. Okay. What about no you? Better place than Union. <laughs> what about you, Can John? you repeat that question, sir? Sure. Uh, when you got your orders that you were able to leave service, what was your reaction? Well, over here, I love you. <laughs> yeah, I was happy, you know, and uh, after two and a half years in Germany, now I enjoyed the whole time, but I was ready to come home, even though I was afraid to uh, fly, but I was ready. 
<laughs> if I had to take some kind of pill to <laughs> sedate me, I was ready to come home. All right, well, My mother was ready for me to come home, so, yeah. you know. What about you, Joe? But I, I retired. I had, had over 30 years of service, and uh, I probably could have still did some more, but I'm a believer that if, 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 if you can't better something or change something, uh, it's best for you to load up and turn to the next chapter. Uh, I didn't like some things that was going on in our military. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a man. My daddy raised me to be a man, and, and I'm going to treat you like a man. But when you start doing all this other stuff and allowing people to come in and stuff strictly not dealing with the Bible. Yeah. So thank God he blessed me to have that option. A lot of people didn't have that option, so you have to put up with stuff. I had 30 years plus, so I didn't have to. Right. But uh, kind of like uh, John Earl Hill, I, I don't think I remember a day talking to my mama that she didn't ask me was I ready to come home. <laughs> well, she wanted me to come home, and then the day that I called her, uh, I asked this guy, Sergeant Major Fort Campbell, Sergeant Major Nathaniel Moore from Birmingham, Alabama. I said, Sergeant Major, how do you know when you how did you know when you want to retire? He said, young first sergeant. He said, when it comes, you'll know. And that was a very true statement. Mm -hmm. So when I when I got out the, the army, I, I'll be totally honest, it, it, it was it was kind of bittersweet. Because that's all I know since I was 17. You know, I was 17 years old when I went in. And the army became my family. It, it, I don't, you know, I hear people say the Army taught me how to be a man. No, my dad taught me how to be a man before I left home. The Army sh helped me sharpen them skills. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I, and I, and sometime now, you know, when friends call you and, you know, you, both of them. I went to one of my friends' retirement at Fort Bragg. He did 30 years. And just being around them soldiers, seeing the parade, seeing how we... And you know, they started, then, you know, driving back to South Carolina, I started to have a flashback. I had to pull over, get this off my mind, you know, because, yeah. But yeah, I, I tell you, that, that day you get them uh, personnel give you them retirement orders, uh, it was bittersweet for me, but I seen the joy in my mama's face. Uh, right. And, and yeah. that made me happy, because mm -hmm. as long as she's happy, I, I can deal with the rest. So. Okay. Uh, well, couple more questions here we'll wrap it up uh, what did you go on doing uh, career-wise after the war did, did, it, did it help you uh, be in service uh, to go uh, to the field that you went into and after you got out I know some of you retired and uh, didn't go on with anything else but how, how did it uh, uh, help you gain uh, employment and, and sharpen your skills to where you, you are today but first of all, with me, it, it wasn't just get out and go. I went through some pretty difficult times. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress, 70%. Uh, the challenging thing with that was I could sit around my nieces and nephews who I wanted to spend time with, but didn't know I had that. So I would see the little, just, 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 just like on their face. And one day my mom came in the room and said to me, you're not like you used to be. And immediately it, it, it did something to me. So I went to the VA and I started getting classes and they got me on medication. And But then getting connected to the VA connected me to more veterans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, like, it's like therapy started right away. And all it was was just somebody that could relate to what I've been right. through and what they've been through. So, uh, so what I did, I used to be the director of a veteran home, a seven-bedroom veteran home in Spartanburg. Ran the thing that's called the Upstate Stand Down. Mm -hmm. I used to be the director of that. And now I work with the DAV, the VBA, the uh, uh, NAACP. I just, uh, for the veteran side of the NAACP in Columbia, uh, I, I work here around this place. and. Uh, so it's, it's, it's like a family it, it reunion. It's, 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 uh, even even the people that you hadn't seen in a while. Some, uh, some so I think that's what that's uh, kept me. Uh, I, I go to school. I'm, I'm 
still working on my uh, doctor degree, and hopefully in October wow. I'll complete that. But I, I don't think I'll ever go away from uh, dealing with veterans because uh, I think that's the problem now in, our, in, um, in America. We People don't really understand this, the stress and the scrutiny that those guys went through. I don't care if they did six months, 18 months, or whatever. That's a, that, I think one of these gentlemen said, that's a difficult life, and everybody yep. can't handle it. Yeah, it's, it's totally different. Yeah. Um, you know, with me, they always looking for a truck driver. I don't care where you go, of some kind. Yep. Heavy dude, small, whatever. M60 tank, well, my, my vehicle, loaded to the max. You're talking 210,000 pounds. That's 105 ton. Loaded. Uh, and that's what I did in the Army. Two and a half years. Uh, I had hyla hernia repair while I was in there. I got 70% for it. Uh, but I was able to go into a job. But, you know, I never had a problem getting a job or acquiring a yeah. job. Uh, I got out, I went to school, Sparmer Tech, probably from 86 to 81. I got my automotive uh, certificate, welding diesel certificate. Uh, so I never had an issue about getting a job. Uh, okay. So the, your skills and service helped you yeah. get those jobs, stuff like that. Okay. Well, let me ask you. Uh, this, and this is the last question here, uh, I want to ask kind of each one of you, start with Charles there, uh, how was you treated when you came back from being in service after you got out by, uh, pe by people in general? Well, by people in my circle, you know, it wasn't a, a wide circle as it is now, but people in my circle uh, treated me as a, as a hero, treated me as someone who had left home uh, looking, seeking a career field, and the Army accomplished that mission for me. So, for that, for that I accomplished that, and people welcomed me in, back in the community in, in my field. It wasn't a thing of, of uh, black, white, or anything like that. It was just that people in my circle, uh, family, distant cousin and, and classmate that knew me, uh, was uh, glad to see me back. Okay. You know. All right. What about you, Mr. Guest? When I, when I would come back to Union, I was uh, given a real warm welcome and hearty welcome. And all my neighbors, all my immediate family from the Kelton people is there gave me a welcome. My church did. I, and, I, uh, and I just, just I, had, I had no crumbs. I was given a hearty welcome back into Great. Union in South Carolina and, and, and working. You just put the other questions there. And I, went, I, had, I had a job already back at the Excel Mill. They had, they, when I come back to work, they moved me up. I moved up in management, and uh, and they uh, uh, that's, I moved up the ladder. I would wanted to take. Uh, they asked me to take it. Uh, wanted a good job in management. I wouldn't overtake, but I ended up still uh, doing some management work at Excel for me. Then went on for my career in other different places, like college, and, and ended up retiring from Walmart in Lawrence, South Carolina. So I had a good career. Great. God, I, I've been blessed. Great. What about you, John Smith? Well, I just kind of eased back into the swing of things just like when I left. Uh, wasn't no big deal leaving, wasn't no big deal coming back. Yeah, so the people uh, treated you good when you come back? Yeah, uh, uh, most of my classmates that I would socialize with, they welcomed me back, they were glad to see me. Uh, I went back to my same job I had before I went in. Uh, it's just like I took a vacation and come back and went back. Okay, great. You know, uh, no problem. Okay. I mean, you know. What about you, Joe? I think when when I came back from the from the war zones, uh, I was at uh, Stuttgart, Germany. When I came back from the Gulf War, and I was at Fort Campbell, a couple wars, uh, Fort Stewart, a couple wars. The reception was was well. When I come home, you know, I had some people say, man, you did over 30 years. We should, the town should do something. But I, what I did, 
I did it because that's what I love to do. Right. So I don't think I deserve no parade. Uh, my parents wanted to do a party, and I just never been that type. I'm the guy that go do what I got to do, and then I move on. So, right. Uh, but as, as I'm, I'm, a, I'm a reader, and I read a lot about these guys, hmm. Vietnam era, and I read about how they were spit on and mm -hmm. made to change clothes and in, in, in uniform and and really never got a true welcome. So a lot of times I'm speaking at Spartan High and on Veterans Day, people call me and I go speak. And, I, and I'm always uh, I'm always putting the, the Vietnam veterans up because without them, that was no foundation for this guy. Right. Uh, they took that. It's, it's like Jesus. Without Jesus carrying that cross up Calvary, where would I be? Definitely. So that's, you know, not putting them on the same level, but look, these guys signed a blank check to go fight a war for a country where people come back and spit on them. It's because their lack of education or what was right. really going on. Yeah. But I, I think, again, and, and this is just my cup of tea, if, if we would feed more and learn more about our government and about our military, I think they would really... I don't care if, again, you do six months, 12 months. That's a different life. I'm still yep. adjusting to this life because people don't move like they're supposed to when I say move. <laughs> but, you, know, you, you know, you tell a person to be there at eight, they come in at quarter to nine. Mm -hmm. to, me, that's, to me, that ignites my post-traumatic stress. <laughs> that's, that's, so... That's the big change, but I'll tell you, uh, that time Frank can get your key or okay. yeah. people see me, and I'm telling you, I, I love it. I love being Walmart, Lowe's, and people see you with your hat or with your shirt, and, and they want to thank you for your service. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I truly, you know, a person would be dead wrong to say that they don't appreciate it. Right. But I, I just don't think the release of us. Yeah, we get a good parade. Yeah, you get seven days, don't drink, don't eat. But we got to continue to deal with them so we can make sure this is right before we put them back out on the economy, back out in the regulars. And I don't think we do a good job, we as a country, right. of taking care of those guys. Because there's a lot of issues, you know. Yep. And uh, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I have to say, uh, coming in and landing and coming off on that red carpet and people having food and all this inside of the hangers and general speaking and just coming down just touching each one of you and telling you how proud of and, and and that's fine that's fine but when I really need your help when I'm screaming at night well, well that's and, and, that, and that's a big change from many years ago and, and, I'm, and that's through education and, and, and thankfulness you know that, uh, that you guys what you went through uh, and, and appreciation and you know that we have the freedom like we have right now to sit out here and talk about this and uh, yeah. uh, you know, and so, so I became the president of the v, Vietnam Veterans of America uh, we encouraged to wear shirts uh, caps to promote the organization uh, I've had countless people tell me thank you for your service they insisted and demanded to pay for my meal if I'm at a restaurant somewhere. Right. It's like they're not going to take no for an answer. Mm. I'll be trying to pay for their meal for my blessing. And we'll wind up going toe to toe. Yeah. And I tell them, I said, well, look, this is how I get my blessing. She said, well, this is how I get my blessing. I'm trying to get them <laughs> too. Amen. So, Amen. And, well, and, it, it, and it makes it kind of like porn that finally getting some appreciation right and you know in a sense i don't go looking for it i want it to serve uh like i say watching the movies and stuff uh the recruiter kind of taught me into picking the navy but i really wanted to drive one of them tanks you know yeah but uh but anyway i i got to do both well that's good and you know and, and that's and that just shows that uh, people do respect and uh and really appreciative now, especially the way things are in the third world countries, and they know that you know they're they're protected by you guys. 
And we're going to end it up right here. And uh, I just want to thank each one of you personally for sitting down and talking to me here and uh, where we can get the, the word out to other people out in social media to, uh, to, to hear your story, to hear a little bit about you and, and, and that you are real. You're not just a, what they say, a soldier and see a, a, a little figure up there and, and not know what it is. But uh, I want to thank all of y'all for your service and for this interview. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.